Cool. Three, two, one. Hey, internet friend, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and I've got my friend Edwin Dearborn on. You there? Yes, I am, sir. Did I get the name right? You did. Is that like because you saw a deer be born, so they decided that's <laughs> going to be the name? <laughs> you are Magic Brad. You, how'd you guess? I'm psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> You're Nostradamus. I could be. <laughs> my nose is what? So what part of the world are you in? I'm in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas, baby. Not, not a lot going on in Las Vegas. Yeah. I just had a conversation with a fellow magician friend of mine. He said a lot of the guys that are doing these big shows are not doing the big shows, so they're driving Uber. <laughs> yeah, and um, the hotels are open, but the shows are closed. Right. But I think that all that's going to change a lot. I got a feeling that they're going to do like distance, social distance seating, a big high ticket, and then they'll broad stream out like a pay-per-view to the rest of the world for $9.95. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Gonna, we're going to be in a different world. So how long have you been in, in Vegas? How long have you been out there? I've been here for almost four years. Okay. So you got your sea legs? I got my sea legs. <laughs> And where were you before that? I was in Orange County, California, where I grew up. Oh, kind of like Los Angeles, the land of fruits and nuts. It, and high taxes and lots of regulations in business. Yeah, Joe Rogan <laughs> said he's probably going to move to Austin. Yeah, I, I saw it coming about five years ago. And my best friend moved out here seven years ago for the same reasons, taxes and regulations in business. And we planted blowing things up. So I wanted to get out before we had to pay all that tax. You planned on blowing things up or they were blowing up? Both. I wanted to blow up my business and they were blowing up their taxes. <laughs> exactly. And you can't be blowing up your business when they're taking it all away from you. Totally. Yeah, it's gotten pretty weird these days. So let's get into talking a little bit about your business now that we kind of know where you live and all that kind of stuff. What, uh, yeah. what kind of business are you in? Well, you know, it's, it's evolved a lot since uh, COVID. Exactly. But for the last four years, I've been on the board of directors for a med tech company called Romtech. And we are expanding. We provide uh, recumbent bicycles that help people recover faster after knee and hip surgery. Mm -hmm. So it's a primary thing I do. But that doesn't take all my time. So I also provide marketing services, but after COVID hit and a lot of, we lost a lot of our marketing clients because they were out of business. I decided to evolve and become a virtual CMO, chief marketing officer for various businesses that I knew would survive that are considered essential, right. like being businesses, um, you know, water treatment, auto mechanics, uh, dentist for emergency services. What are the businesses that are going to stay around no matter what? And then I pivoted to go, look, I'll be your virtual CMO. I'll, I'll grab all your marketing and I'll, and I'll hondo it. I'll, I'll organize it. I'll run it for you because I found that most businesses kind of, well, they got this going on over there and that going on over there, but they don't really know how to coordinate and synthesize everything into a whole. Right. So, that's what I now do for, for various brands. That makes a lot of sense too, because you're on the outside looking in and oftentimes when the chief chef and bottle washers are wearing all of the hats and all of a sudden they get all confused and pretty soon the, they're, you know, if the customer's at the desk and they're going, hang on a second, I got to take care of this. And you, then your customer's going, what? <laughs> totally spot on. In fact, you use the exact term that he used, which is they're wearing their CEO hat. You know, they're doing the, you know, they're running their business. They got kind of their COO hat, which they're doing the production, they're delivering the service, but they really don't have their CMO hat on. They're not really driving in business. Mm -hmm. And they also do, don't do well their CFO hat. Their finances are a mess. Their marketing is almost not, not existent. So they don't have enough business and they're handling their finances poorly. So I go, look, let's get your CFO hat worn virtually with a bookkeeper or a CPA. Let's get that well. And then let me help drive growth, which is really what a CMO is supposed to do. They're supposed to drive 
business in on the business. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I, I saw also in, uh, that you do some stuff with branding. Because I think branding is really, really important these days in the internet world. Very important. And it's really how you stand out. What a lot of people have a problem understanding is, A, what branding really means in today's environment. <laughs> They think it's just a logo and a website. And I'm like, no, that's... Everything is this beautiful shade of purple. Totally. What? <laughs> totally. And then number two, the estimation of effort required to really build a brand with the target audience that you're trying to go. So, you know, maybe just a bookkeeper in Vegas and he just wants to build his brand, you know, with 500 ideal clients. That's really all he really needs to do to have a great bookkeeping business. So how does he do that? How does he stand out amongst the crowd as the obvious choice? And even if he did stand out, how long does it really take to build the brand as the as that go to obvious choice? So, you know, most people think, like I said before, branding is a logo and a pretty website, when really today, branding is about putting out content that engages and educates people like what you're doing with your show that builds a brand more than a logo. Mm -hmm. And you take a look at branding masters like Gary Vaynerchuk or Grant Cardone or Elon Musk. They put out a lot of content and that is built their brand much more than their website or their logo. And you have to have something I think that's really unique because mm -hmm. there's, you know, you know, Gary V, he's created Gary V. It's not even his name, but Vaynerchuk is too hard to spell, so he just creates Gary V, and now you know how to find him. He's, that, that's, his, that's my magic, like my magic Brad brand. There's totally. Brad Pitt, and there's other magicians that are Brad, but I don't do much magic anymore, but I thought I'd grab that name, and I just make sure that I got those words, you know, those domain names, and capture as much internet real estate as I can. And uh, I even tell people, when they say, how do you get a hold of you? What's your website? I said, you don't need a website. Just Google the word. <laughs> You'll find me. Totally. And that's the, you bring up a good point. That's the power of a brand. See, if you can get people to Google your brand, they'll find your content and your website. That's the best way to optimize a website. Yeah. Versus you spend thousands of dollars on SEO to optimize it, build the brand so that when they, um, Hope your camera Did I get there? Okay, sorry about that. So that when they think about getting a bookkeeper, let's say it's, you know, you built the brand Las Vegas Bookkeeping or Best Bookkeeping of Las Vegas, and you kept pounding that in, all they would do is type in Best Bookkeeping of, of Las Vegas. And there you'd be. There'd be your LinkedIn profile, your website, your Twitter, and you'd become the obvious choice. So you're going to get way more traction over time, which it takes a while to build a brand, by building the brand, by versus doing all this old school SEO nonsense that can be very expensive and a bit of a gamble, to be honest. And with it you. changes rapidly. You know, you can type in Apple and you're not going to get the fruit. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. We're on the so, same page. Though. I think a lot of people, like you said, do get real confused with the branding and they put a whole bunch of money into graphic design. And it's really about, a, uh, especially for like the solopreneur, it's about the character, you know, the, the icon, the, the, the brand. Just like they brand a cow so you can tell that all those cows are your cows. <laughs> yeah, and I think the other thing that, um, that I really tell people is, is that, okay, so let's say you build that brand, but the brand's got to represent something and be associated contextually. Meaning you, you can't just have a logo stand by itself. There's got to be things associated with it, like the Gary V show or Gary V is going to be at this speaking engagement or the Gary V book. You have to build content around it so that the brand has context, meaning and value to an individual. So what do you say to the, the person that the, the company that says, you know what, you don't know nothing about our company. How can you possibly help us market it? Uh, great question. I get that question quite a bit. I know. <laughs> uh, I, 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 there's two answers that I have. Number one, the laws of marketing and branding are universal. 
what are we trying to do? We're trying to get you known and consumed. So th there's some universal laws like gravity about branding and marketing. And although I may not know about your niche or about your industry, I do know that you're trying to get your brand consumed more often. You want more eyeballs, you want more revenue. Mm -hmm. That is something that I understand. Number two, if you give me your materials and I, and I do some study about your industry, and more importantly, I survey and interview your target audience, then I'll be able to find that sweet spot of what they want and what you can say and then bring you two together. Because really what right. branding and marketing is about is bringing people together and, and, and making you valuable in their eyes. Yeah, I uh, use an analogy. Uh, recently, I've been using it a lot because some people think I just want numbers, 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 numbers. But the reality is if you're selling like uh, steaks and hamburgers, hot dogs and burgers, and you're marketing to vegans and vegetarians, you're not going to make any sales. I don't right. care how many vegans and vegetarians you market to. You that's get right. Alignment. That's right. And, and so that's, you know, that's what I tell them. And, you know, I think everybody kind of gets so internalized that they think they're so special that they forget that there's a broader set of processes and uh, technologies that do embrace what they're doing. YouTube is universal. You create a great video about what you do, that's universal. So how do we tell your story on video? So I may not understand your niche, but I know storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I know that people will respond to a good story being told. So do you, uh, with your consulting, do you consult like open different kinds of niches and, and industries and things? Or you got a specific that you're kind of? Um, I've done a lot of different industries. I've done all the way from medical technology to tattoo parlors and everything in between. Um, again, there's a universalness to it. What I've been concentrating on in the last, you know, since COVID hit, is I really kind of reverse engineered who are the essential businesses because I don't want to get clients that are wiped out by the second wave or the next pandemic. There are businesses that just seem to survive no matter what. Like you always need an accountant. Mm -hmm. um, doctors are going to be around. Like Real if state. there's, yeah, there uh, water treatment. If your pipes, you know, plumbers. If your toilet blows up, you need a plumber, no matter if there's a pandemic or not. Mm -hmm. Auto mechanics. Exactly. So, being kind of niching down to who would survive the next quarantine? Who's going to stay in business and be considered essential? Because if I'm serving essential businesses, I'll always be essential with them. Sure. Yeah, I, I, it was a shock to me because my background with the magical entertainment led me into events. And uh, just this year, I was focusing on events, hospitality, travel, and tourism. I just finished my expo on March 4th. And then around March 12th or 17th, this COVID thing happened. And guess what happens to events, travel, and tourism? And the, Wiped out. <laughs> totally, just put the brakes on it. So I did a pivot and moved towards uh, affiliate marketing online. It's just a I never expected it to disappear like that. I thought people are always going to want to get together and meet together and go to events, but now you can't. So, Yeah, and, and you bring up a good point was pivot, which is I did the same thing, which is, you know, I was going after businesses that would stay open. You'd think all the time, but then all of a sudden you're calling your clients and they're like, oh yeah, we just shut down. We're, you know, and I was like, wait, I can't, I can't survive on this. So what I did is I said, you know what I'm going to do is instead of selling them services, I'm going to join them on the C-suite level more on a consulting basis than selling them things. So now I'm part of the team, A, that's a pivot, and B, I'm going to go after industries that will survive the next wave if and when it hopefully it doesn't, you know, I pray that it doesn't. But now that we know that it has happened before, Logic says, you know, right. it, but again, so why don't have my, you know, like the Boy Scouts be prepared, you know, just be ready just in case. Yeah, the, the creativity and innovation that a lot of people come up with too, like uh, I was just talking with a friend out in Las Vegas there and uh, 
they're getting creative with all this stuff, like doing shows in their living room and then live streaming it on Facebook and then clients buy it via a PayPal link and then project it on a screen into their venue and stuff. So they're still making, figuring out how, they, how can we make this thing work? That's kind of fascinating of it. Human ingenuity. We yep. will survive. <laughs> Necessity is the mother of all invention. Yeah. So if someone is interested in uh, using your services and getting into your brain and kind of figuring out how all this stuff all works, how do they get a hold of you? Just go to LinkedIn and type in Edwin Dearborn, D-E-A-R-B-O-R-N. Uh, it's probably the easiest way because my contact information, my email, my phone number, plus they can just direct message me. I love LinkedIn. I think it's probably the greatest untapped unlock for a lot of business people. Now that we can't network in person, what is, what is LinkedIn? It's business networking. Sure. So I've really become a strong advocate of that since March. I've gotten a lot of progress, not only with myself, but a lot of the brands that I work with. LinkedIn has become kind of a, a key pivot to network. So just type in my name. You'll see my profile. Send me a message and we'll just chat from there. See, that's a good way to do it too. You don't have to worry about uh, you know SEO and website domains and all that stuff. Just find you on, on a platform that's already there. It's kind of like, you know, where are you going to be? Well, I'm hanging out at the pub down on uh, 15th and, and Broadway. That's Great where I am. LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn. Um, yeah, and and the thing is, is people trust LinkedIn. They remember LinkedIn. They've already built the brand for me and you. I just got to put me as a sub brand on their brand and just kind of ride their wave and it's a lot easier to do it that way absolutely well i will uh put that into i'll put your i'll, I'll grab your uh, linkedin link and i what i do is i put these up at the good old youtube and i'll put all that stuff in the description and then i propagate out to social media and uh, one hand washing the other if you can help get that word out oh, that's how we make the yeah, world I'll, go around <laughs> i'll share it with all my uh i got about fourteen thousand connections on linkedin so I'll share it with them and and uh, about 20,000 on through other platforms. Wonderful. Well, I will get this up and I usually get it done within an hour. So thank you, Edwin. And uh, maybe down the road, we'll come up with something else. Maybe if there's a niche you wanna work in or I, I love doing more of these. When we do this, it creates content for both of us, so. That's awesome. Well, again, thank you for your time and dedication on this. I really appreciate being on the show. Thank you, peace. All right. <laughs>